All right, gang, welcome to Hanson's Speed Shop. It's finally time for another muscle bike ride review. Today, we're gonna to be doing this 1975 Schwinn Stingray Fair Lady. So uh, let's take a look at it. All right, guys, so this is a 1975 Schwinn Stingray Fair Lady that I've nicknamed uh, Flower Power. And it's in a very nice um, candy blue color. This bike is pretty much uh, mostly original. I'm going to talk about how this bike would have came um, from the factory and then how this bike is right now. Um, I've had this bike for about at least 20 years or so. Um, but in 1975, there would have, I think, only been two colors that you could have gotten. Um, a Stingray or the Fair Lady in, and it would have just been this blue or red. Um, by the mid 70s, Schwinn really started to kind of limit the colors on the Stingray lines of bikes. Um, a few years prior, there was only like three or four colors, and then by the later 70s, uh, basically you could get red or blue. Um, there were a few exceptions, like they made um, a, a green and yellow um, Stingray. Um, for like a year or two and then they made like a blue and um, silver one for like another year or two um, but for the most part the standard bikes came in, in at this air time period two colors um, this bike would have came from the factory with front and rear fenders when I got the bike it had the fenders on it um, but I kind of wanted to give it a more sporty look so we got rid of the fenders a long time ago this bike also um, would have come from the factory with a S7 front wheel, um, which it no longer has, and it would have had the S7 back wheel, which it still has, but it would have had um, the skinny brick tires like this in the back also. Um, if you watched, we had a two-part video series on this bike um, where I got this thing roadworthy. It was kind of just sitting neglected for like 15 plus years and we got it roadworthy again over this last winter. So if you want to go check that out, um, it's pretty cool, pretty interesting. Um, but uh, I threw this old vintage Schwinn gripper slick on here on the back that I had. Um, when I put this thing back together, I wanted to do it as cheap as possible with just stuff I had laying around. So I had that tire and I think it really gave this bike a nice um, sporty look um, that I kind of wanted to go with on this bike. Um, another really cool feature on this era of the Fair Lady is um, the Stingray logo on the chain guard. So Schwinn Stingray Fair Lady. Um, you've got your nice five spoke um, sprocket. And um, these are different than what you would have had on a crate or a fastback. It's similar style, um, but the fastbacks and the crate, um, I would say the the spokes are a little bit more pronounced, and I think the sprocket might even be slightly bigger. Um, on this era of Schwinn Stingray or Fair Lady, um, you would have had these um, waffle style pedals. These are the later style pedals. You can tell by the end of the pedal, but they also have the reflectors on the side. So by the mid 70s, um, the government mandated that the bikes gotta have, I think like six reflectors on them or something. So usually you'd have a reflector on each wheel. Um, you'd have a reflector on the pedals, um, under the seat, you would have had a reflector. And then sometimes they'd even put one up on the handlebars or something. Um, I've got all the reflectors off here with the exception of the pedals. Now, when we went back through and, and uh, kind of revived this bike, um, I got these pedals at a thrift store a few years ago for like two bucks. And as you can see, there's a date code of 1976 on them. So they're perfect for this bike. Um, it's still running the original chain. This is a single speed um, kickback or coaster brake wheel. So honestly, in my opinion, if just for basic riding, this setup is the best for a rider. Uh, the single speed coaster brake and then with this big chain ring. Um, and also by this time period, um, they were running a fairly long crank on here. So this 
setup um, is just a nice rider. You don't have to always worry about trying to find the perfect gear. And in my opinion, the, the kickback or coaster brake stops better than the, the caliper brakes of that era. Um, so this is my favorite combination. It's just a basic rider. Um, and I've also talked about in a lot of my muscle bike videos, if you are looking to get into a vintage muscle bike or banana seat bike and you don't want to spend a lot of money or you don't have a lot of money to spend, definitely take a look at these girls bikes because really you get the exact same riding experience, um, the same feel, and a lot of the parts are the same. Um, and you're going to spend like a quarter of the money. Like I would put a value on this bike as it sits right now. It's ready to go. You can get on it, ride it anywhere. And it's in pretty nice shape. So I would say maybe like a $250 bike. Um, but a boy's bike in the same condition, same year, would probably be at least five to six hundred dollars so double um so that's something to keep in mind um but uh, we'll get back to this bike so another thing on a girl's bike is they have this extremely long um head tube which is different than the boys bikes have a shorter head tube so the forks um are not interchangeable between a boys bike and a girl's bike with schwinn um got a nice gooseneck stem, uh, stem. Um, we've got our narrow style handlebars which they went to this style handlebar in 1970 um, which was also because of a government um, regulation um, they made the handlebars narrower here so that kids couldn't sit on the handlebars because 69 and earlier um, stingrays had different variants of wider style handlebars but in 1970, and then basically for the remainder of the Stingray up until the early 80s, they basically ran this narrow style handlebar. Um, got these really cool um, metallic blue slimline grips on here. Um, on the front, we're just running some type of aftermarket S2 sized wheel. Um, but this is the same style tire that would have came on this bike from the factory. It's just a reproduction style tire. This is an original um, Schwinn Gripper Slick. Going around to this side of the bike. Um, would have, this is the style kickstand that would have came on basically every type of um, Schwinn Stingray or Schwinn bike in general. And there's like a cam in here. Um, different models on different years um, have different numbers. There's a number stamped on the back of these kickstands. Um, starting in, I believe, 1968, they went to this shorter style seat clamp with just the S on the bolt. Um, this is the original correct style um, clamp sissy bar with the low hoop. This is what this bike would have came with from the factory. Um, this bike would not have came with this super cool um, Brady Bunch seat. Um, I'm guessing it would have come with a matching uh, metallic blue seat. Um, but this would have been a correct era um, accessory seat that would have been sold at like the Schwinn dealer or um, uh, any bike shop. And this is what was on here when I got the bike. Um, so I left it on here um, because it is correct to the era and um, it's still in really nice shape and I think it's super cool. Um, when we went through and redid this bike and got um, it back on the road, we went through and did everything, greased every bearing, um, cleaned up everything, made sure everything was tight and just perfect on here. Um, there was a piece of tape here that was kind of like petrified almost and I scraped it off and under it was this really neat um, City of M Milwaukee bicycle registration that expired in I think it's like 1985 April of 85 let's double check that yeah 84 um, so this bike would have been like nine years old at that point in time um, 
right here it's pretty worn um, but it would it said Schwinn right here on the down tube with the little stars on each end of it um, it's pretty worn and it's hard to see but it would have said Schwinn right here on the down tube you can still kind of barely see it on this side um, this is the original Schwinn head badge um, by this era it says Chicago on the bottom and the R is um, registered trademark R is in black. That's correct for this era of Schwinn. Um, so basically that is the basic overview and look um, at this Schwinn. Um, one other quick thing, um, if you notice on this particular bike, um, the back sprocket's pretty large and you got a pretty good um, sized front sprocket. So again, that's just gonna give you a nice, um, a nice low and top end combination. Um, the closer you can get your two sprockets to be the same um, size is just gonna give you a nice, if you got like a big sprocket in the back and a little sprocket up front or vice versa, it's usually gonna give you like a better top end or a better kind of low riding speed. But this is just gonna give a nice kind of average ride around town combination. So um, we'll take this thing for a ride and I'll tell you guys what I think of it. All right, guys, so let's take this thing for a ride. So this is probably gonna be the first time I've rolled this bike in at least I'd say 15 years or better. And this will be the first time I've rode it since I went back through and um, kind of went through everything. Now, when I originally had this bike um, as a kid, I had this one and then I had my blue boy Schwinn Stingray that we're gonna be doing another muscle bike ride and review on. I would kind of alternate riding these bikes to school. Like one day I'd ride this one, the other day, day I'd ride my boys one but this was a really good riding bike even back then and i just got the bike and started riding and i never did anything to it so it's going to be interesting to um take this thing for a ride so sitting on the bike super comfortable just nice riding position and these are honestly kind of been my aesthetically i like the the wider schwinn handlebars i think they look kind of cooler but riding wise these were always my favorite style it just gives you a nice tight comfortable um feel when you're on the bike and this is just a nice comfortable um riding position here's what it looks like sitting on the bike um and i am like six one and i comfortably can fit on this bike so if you're kind of thinking like you're an adult or whatever um that'll kind of give you a little bit of an idea now i don't have the longest of legs but <clears throat> i am just over six feet tall so we're going to take this thing for a ride and uh we'll see how this goes okay things pedal super nice now that we got all the bearings re-greased and everything handles really nice try the brakes out stops really good again i really like the coaster brakes the best um, i think they just stop better it's just kind of gives you that old school riding experience and when you were a kid nothing does skids better than the old kickback brakes um, but this bike is just super enjoyable to ride i would ride this thing all anywhere basically i mean when i was a kid i'd go on like super long bike rides with this all over town like sometimes six to ten mile rides on this thing and that was back when everything on here was just kind of untouched so now i'd feel comfortable to get on this thing and ride it anywhere but again like i talked about if you just want one of these to ride around and have fun with like take it to events or car shows or whatever or just ride around town you're going to get tons of attention uh, tons of thumbs up and everything and not gonna spend a ton of money and it gives you the same uh feel and riding experience that you would on a boy's bike 
And honestly, the girls' bikes are kind of easier to ride because I'm going to show you why. So, <clears throat> they basically all girls' bikes from back in the day had these drop down to top tubes so girls could get on and off of the bike easily if they're wearing a skirt or whatever. But it just makes it easy to get on and off of in general. Barely got to lift your leg up to get on and off the bike. Especially if you're somebody that has like hip problems or you're not super tall or whatever. Because if you got to lift your leg up over the seat, it's kind of difficult. Or to get it up over the top tube without kicking it can be difficult. A lot of times on boys' bikes, you know, the top tube's right here and they'll be all scuffed up and that's from getting on and off the bike another thing that's good about a girl's bike is on a boy's bike if you stand if you're riding up while you're you know standing um your shin will always kind of want to bash the top tube at least in my experience where on a girl's bike it's swung way down low so they're easier to stand up and ride um, but really these are pretty comfortable to just sit around and sit on the seat cruise them around um, but that's going to do it for our 75 Schwinn Stingray Fair Lady I hope you guys dug this if you got any questions about these bikes um, I try to reply and answer as best as I can or if you just want to leave a comment go for it um, there's going to be more Muscle bike riding reviews on the way, along with a ton of other old banana seat muscle bike videos. So hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, until next time, get out work on your own projects, get those hands dirty and greasy, stay cool, and we'll catch you cats on the next one. Thanks for watching.